My name is Albert Cabello, and I'm a principal product manager at the core platform team in Intune. Today, I'm going to talk about all things latency. I'll describe how Intune works today, some changes coming your way soon, and also a sneak peek into future investments. When you talk to customers about latency, what I hear, I would classify into three big buckets, speed, predictability, and transparency. Speed is all about getting changes to devices as fast as possible. Predictability, it's about enabling consistency. So the same action takes the same amount of time regardless of the platform, the day, or other changes going on in your organization or, or other organizations in your same data center. And transparency is about giving you all the information you need to determine if things are well underway, and if there are any hiccups, help you troubleshoot. In this session, I'll spend a little bit of time on each. But first, let's set a set on how things work today. Device check-in is the process that enables your organization to maintain control over the devices you manage, ensuring security requirements are enforced, like applying any pending updates to policies or apps, then updating the Intune reports for that device with the latest information. I would classify device check-ins into three big buckets. Single device check-ins are actions that an admin or end user takes on a single device. Like for example, getting an app from the company portal or a device action like a device sync, a remote wipe, or a script execution. Then we have maintenance check-ins. Those usually happen behind the scenes and can be either client or service initiated depending on the platform. And last, there are the chains-based check-ins. Those are what I call the fast lane. It's important to know that no matter what the check-in type, there are per device, per organization, time-based quotas on the number of check-ins in order to deliver a consistently good experience to all Intune customers. You might be wondering what goes into the fast lane. In short, when a change happens, devices impacted by that change will be notified by Intune to check in. So in other words, to result in faster device changes, Intune pushes devices to check to effect change. There are four types of changes that Intune listens to and notify devices about. An admin changing the targeting for a payload like adding a new user or device group to an already existing assignment, making a change to the contents of a payload, like changing the value of a given policy or anything that results on a document version change. That will trigger a notification. Entra membership changes also trigger a notification, like for example, an Entra admin nesting a new security group to a group that is already being targeted on a payload. And last, when developers publish a new version of their apps on an app store, that would also trigger a notification to users or devices impacted. An interesting thing here is that while the first two are a direct result of an Intune admin action, the last two might happen behind the scenes and without the admin really noticing. This is especially true for App Store apps, where the admin has no control over when those apps are getting updated by its vendor or how App Stores control the rollout of apps to devices. But either way, those changes will result on Intune sending a push notification for devices to check in. Now, maintenance check-ins are also playing an important role in device management. Even where there are no service side changes pending, we periodically have devices checking in to do things like refreshing its compliance status, performing behind the scene changes like updating the client enrollment certificates or keeping the Intune client apps up to date. Maintenance check-ins are also how Intune keeps its reporting for devices up to date. And last but not least, maintenance check-ins are also how Intune evaluates devices for changes. Like imagine a device that got updated to a last version of an operating system, and as a result, there might be new or updated policies or apps applicable to that device, and maintenance checking is a, way, a good way of catching up on those changes. There are a few popular misconceptions, though. First is that maintenance check-ins are the primary mechanism to deliver changes to devices. They are not. Second is that all maintenance check-ins are happening on a fixed schedule. And third is that the Intune refresh time of eight hours is because of its reliance on maintenance check-ins. The truth is the vast majority of maintenance check-ins usually do not result in device changes, but we still like to have them happen periodically. Going a bit more in depth onto the different types of check-in traffic. At any time, traffic on our check-in gateway is processing anywhere from 15 to 20% change-based check-ins, and the rest are usually of the maintenance kind. That makes sense. The normal state is steady state with some changes going on here and there. Now, if we zoom in into those maintenance check-ins, we'll see that there is a lot more to it than just the so-called scheduled task. A user logging into the device will trigger a device check-in. 
a change on the security state of the device, like a change on the firewall settings, will trigger a device to check in. Then yes, a subset of the maintenance check-ins do happen on a schedule of sorts, whether it's client or service initiated. An important point here is, until a device or organization hits their check-in limits, Intune does not discriminate between check-in types. We process all check-ins first come, first serve. But when a device or organization hits their check-in limits, we will start prioritizing change-based check-ins over maintenance check-ins. And if necessary, we might ask a portion of the devices checking in for maintenance reasons to come back later. We just touched on a reason for latency, devices getting throttled, but there are more. Some of them we do not have control over, like platform-specific optimizations for when or how devices can or cannot apply changes. A good example of that is not now on iOS and iPad platforms or devices triggering power saving mobs. The second sort of latency is under your and your user's control. A payload that is targeting a user needs that user be signed in on that device. An application installed can proceed until the application is closed. Poor bandwidth conditions might result on a slow or uninterrupted app download. And the third source of latency is Intune. For the rest of the session, I'm going to focus primarily on what Intune is doing about latency, and in particular, how we manage capacity and how we're doing to better handle check-ins. In terms of capacity management, our goal is to provide a consistent experience over time as both our service and our customer needs evolve. Intune runs on tens of data centers around the world, and we are constantly evaluating demand and adding capacity as needed. As we add new data centers, we often rebalance the load in current data centers and free up resources we claim back in the form of additional capacity to process more check-ins. We also project customer and service growth to get ahead on this planning, and we will freeze an existing data center and not allow more customer signups to maintain a consistent experience as time passes. As we work on new features, we have a specific quality gates to evaluate its impact on the device check-in process. We also regularly analyze every component configurations against current traffic and usage patterns and adjust limits and quotas both globally and locally to keep a high level of service. And last but not least, if at any time we fall short of our internal goals, we work 24 seven until we get back to healthy. Now, while this might sound quite manual in nature, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes to make these processes more efficient like reducing the time it takes to stand up a new data center from three months to one month, while others were straight on working on automation, like adjusting our limits and quotas dynamically to better attend demand throughout the day. Now let's go a little bit more in depth on a specific check-in improvements, starting with change-based check-ins. Our goal is to notify devices with pending changes within the hour. This requires that notifications and device check-in loop to be reliable and fast. Here's some work that we're doing to achieve that. First, ensuring consistency when we notify devices. In the past, we would notify devices on an initial first change, but there would be cases like when multiple changes are happening in rapid succession or when device or organizational quotas are hit. In those cases, additional access notifications would be dropped. We're now working towards a model where every change will queue a notification for devices to check in. And even in the event when a device or organization has temporarily hit its time-based quarters, instead of dropping those access notifications, we will be queuing those notifications to be processed next. Second, we're working with our platform partners, Windows, Apple, and Google, to track notifications delivery end-to-end, -end, basically to get delivery receipts on our notification attendance. We will use these receipts combined with online presence to optimize how we notify devices, starting with online devices first, and re-attempting notifications for devices that were not reachable or where our earlier attempts did not succeed. Next, we'll adjust our notification quotas dynamically and in real time. That is, when we know that the check-in gateway has excess capacity to process more check-ins, we'll process more notifications to get changes to devices faster. And last, but arguably most importantly, we will keep track of devices with pending changes. So when a device with a pending change checks in, Whatever the reason for that check-in might be, maintenance or otherwise, devices with pending changes will always be prioritized. On maintenance check-ins, our goal is to maximize the number of successful check-ins throughout the day. 
That means within the maintenance category, we'll do fine grain prioritization on those check-ins that are more likely to result on changes to devices, like first time user logon every day or check-ins from security or compliance changes detected on the device. Second is getting smarter about those scheduled check-ins, moving away a little from the concept of fixed schedule and more towards on demand, factoring in the device usage patterns to time those check-ins better. What that means practically is, imagine for example, a device that just recently checked in and applied changes. It would not be very useful to have a maintenance check-in back to back, only because it happened to be scheduled. And it might make more sense actually to have that scheduled check-in to be pushed a little bit further in time. Similarly, we want to ensure that devices don't have any back-to-back -back delayed check-ins. Or take devices with particular online offline patterns, like school devices, or manufacturing floor devices, or devices for flight attendants. Imagine Intune understanding those device usage patterns and triggering their maintenance check-ins at the right time, instead of getting missed because they were offline or up in the air. Third is continue optimizing our check-in gateway scale improving the efficiency of our check-in processes so we can process more check-ins at once. An example of that is declarative device management. To explain what declarative device management is and how it's going to turn the latency conversation back on its head, first we need to talk about how the current 15-year-old OMA device management protocol works. Imagine an example where an admin is making a single policy change, like changing the complexity of the user password. In the current device check-in model, there are multiple run trips between the device and Intune to retrieve, apply, and verify each of those settings. In some cases, like scripts or apps, check-in process also needs to call other downstream services, sometimes even outside of Intune, to retrieve all relevant metadata and configuration for those payloads. And of course, this back and forth requires a live and interrupted connection between the device and Intune for several minutes how long? It really depends on the amount of payloads that need remediation, and the complexity of those payloads, the stability of that connection, and so forth. If any of those run trips fails, then the entire check-in session will fail, requiring another check-in to complete the changes. Now, let's look at a different way of doing things. Declarative device management is an extension that builds on top of the OMA NDA protocol. At core, it's a more efficient and reliable way of managing devices where instead of sending bits and pieces requiring multiple run trips, we use a single document that contains all the settings and desired state configurations and we deliver that in a single run trip. There is no longer a dependency on the Intune service initiating a check-in for things to happen. The device will primarily and regularly compare on its own the current system configuration versus the intended and the configuration using the local copy of that DDM document. When deviations from the intended configuration are found, the device will try to address them locally. And when that is not possible, the device will proactively trigger a check-in with Intune to address the drift. That continuous checking and reapplying of the configuration even works when devices are offline or otherwise unable to reach out to Intune. In other words, the concept of maintenance check-ins happens more regularly and are handled by the device itself. And when changes do occur, the device will proactively initiate that check-in, so the reporting of the device's status on the Intune console is both faster and richer. Best of all, there is nothing you need to do to enable things or migration of any kind. This is all behind the scenes work that we, the Intune team, is working on. This benefits latency in multiple ways. Every workload that we move to the declarative model results on faster remediation times. And as we move more workloads to this new declarative device management, they also free up capacity on the traditional device check-in gateway, so we can also have faster, more resilient, and more frequent check-ins for the workloads that haven't migrated yet. So it's a win-win-win. Last, let's talk a little bit about transparency. Think about the last time that you purchased something online. You got a tracking number, you got an estimated delivery time, you could follow the journey along, and if something happened that affected the delivery times, like a weather event or a missed delivery, you would not only get an updated delivery date, but also you could take specific actions, like redirecting that package to another address or signing a release form. We aspire to offer you a similar experience within Intune. So let's look a little bit behind the scenes at what happens when a change is triggered. As we said, Intune is constantly listening for sources of changes. When a change occurs, we compile a list of devices that are directly or indirectly affected. 
I like calling that number applicable devices. And it's basically your denominator, how many packages we expect to deliver as a result of a change. Next is notifying devices to check in. Like I said, there might be multiple changes going on at once on a given organization. So there is some work behind the scenes to reason through all the changes being triggered and ensure we maximize the reach to affect as much change for as many devices as fast as possible. We rely on and partner with platform-specific systems for that last mile delivery, much like your parcel service sometimes relies on the local post office for the actual home delivery. And last is what I call the device remediation. Whatever the reason for the device check-in may be, Intium will compare actual versus desired device configuration, apply all necessary changes, and report status back. Now, if you look at the Intium console reports today, most of what you see corresponds to that last step, the device remediation step. However, you get little visibility into the areas that cause the most latency, and that is getting devices to check-in. So here are some concepts illustrating what we want to do to increase transparency moving forward. Imagine our Intune reports putting front and center the key milestones on the delivery journey to help you quickly visualize how far along your packages are and allowing you to zoom in into any one particular stage and get additional details. We also think it's important to give you a visual of everything we've done to deliver your packages and any events that might have caused additional latency, like failed notification or delivery attempts, or maybe an app download that got interrupted due to a bad connection, or maybe an install that got stuck because the device needs a read. Imagine all those boxes acting as a magnifying glass, so you can quickly narrow down and take action on a specific population that is stuck for a particular reason. Even further, Imagine being able to zoom in into one particular device and being able to follow its entire journey, alongside with the troubleshooting tools you need right there, whether it is executing a remote action, collecting additional diagnostics, or engaging an interactive health session. In closing, we recognize that latency is an issue that touches multiple areas on Intune. We care about getting changes to devices as fast as possible. We talk a little bit about consistency, how we're building a more predictable system that you can rely on. We also talk about how we're building a more transparent system and help you more effectively troubleshoot when, when needed. I love to hear your thoughts and feedback. Reach out to me directly at albert.cabello at microsoft.com. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn with me about this important topic today and have a great day.